Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss what is a data type, what is the purpose of a data type and then I will discuss about various data types such as primitive data types, non-primitive data types. In primitive data types, we will have a boolean, we will have an integer, okay, we will have a float numbers for float and double. All these concepts I will discuss in detail with you. So I sincerely request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First, let me discuss what is the purpose of the, the data type. In the last video, we have discussed about a variable. A variable can store the value or even we can say that a variable is a name given to the memory location. In that memory location, you are storing some value. Okay. The general syntax for declaring any variable is you need to specify the data type and then you need to specify the variable name and then you will end with a semicolon. Let me discuss with a simple example. I will have an int a. So here int is the data type and variable name is a. So the data type will tell you what kind of values this variable can hold, how much memory location will be allocated and what is the range of values it can store. Is it clear? So these are the three things any data type will tell you. What is the values you can store? Okay, and then memory storage, how much storage will be occupied for holding this variable. Okay, and the third one is that a range of values you can store in that variable. Okay, is it clear? So, suppose let's take that int is the data type I have specified. So, this variable a can store the integers. Okay, and how much memory location will be allocated as it is an int 4 bytes of memory will be allocated 4 bytes is nothing but 32 bit okay and what are the range of values it can hold is that it can hold minus 2 power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1 okay how this range came I will discuss with you don't worry is it clear? So this is what we will call it as a two's complement representation. In a computer, every number will be stored in a two's complement form. Okay, we have sign magnitude representation, one's complement representation and two's complement representation. In sign magnitude representation and one's complement representation, there are some limitations like plus zero and minus zero will be represented in two different forms in sign magnitude and one's complement. However, plus zero and minus zero is just zero. We should have a single representation. To overcome that one, uh, people have introduced the two's complement representation. So uh, the negative numbers and positive numbers will be stored in the two's complement form. However, the positive number can be represented in sign magnitude, one's complement, two's complement. The representation will be same only for the negative numbers all these three representation will vary. So in a computer we are in a memory we will store any negative number in the two's complement form. Okay, so I hope you have understood if I write a variable as int a, the a is the variable name and data type is int. So it can hold the integer values, it occupy four bytes of memory and the range of values is this much. So now let me discuss the data types are classified into two types. One is primitive data types and another one is non-primitive data types. The primitive data types are again broadly classified into boolean type, meaning is that boolean. So boolean can hold the value true or false. It can hold the values true or false. So it is a one bit information, true or false. Is it clear? Then we will have a numeric type. Numeric type will have integers. Okay, the integers are like, suppose let's take that you have 10, 10 is an integer, 100 is an integer, 1000 is an integer, okay, 101 is an integer. Remember one thing, usually if I want to represent one like I will represent with commas. But however, in any programming language, you should not separate the integers with comma, you should have one five zeros, is it clear? So. This is what the integers, so integers again classified into four types, one is byte, another one is short, another one is int, another one is long. Then you can ask me, for storing an integer, why we have these many classifications? Based on the memory, is it clear? Suppose let's say that you have want to, or let's say that you want to store the value 10. For storing 10, why should you get, take an int which occupies 4 byte? Is it clear? Instead of that one, you take the smallest one. 
So the based on the memory, they have classified into four types. The byte will occupy one byte, meaning is that eight bits. Okay. If it is a short, short will occupy two bytes. Okay. So which is nothing but 16 bit information, means you can hold 16 bits. Int is four bytes, so which is 32 bit. Long is 8 byte, so which is 64 bit. So, based on the memory, okay, you can hold the different range of values. So, if you want to store the 10, why to take the 4 bytes? You can represent using a 1 byte also. Is it clear? So, based on the number you want to store or the value you want to store, you can take any one of them, okay. Is it clear? Similarly, for the float, float is nothing but for the decimal numbers like 10.3, 4.6, like that if you want to represent, then we will take the float. The float will occupy 4 bytes. The float will take the single precision representation. The real numbers will be represented in the two forms. One is single precision and double precision. Again, the single precision and double precision are representing based on how much memory will be allocated. Every floating point number will have three things. One is the sign, whether it is a positive number or negative number, and you will have the exponent. Is it clear? And another one is the mantis. Okay, so every floating point number will be represented as minus 1 power s. If it is an implicit, it will be represented as 1 dot m and 2 power exponent and then you will have the bias all these things i don't want to discuss here the floating point numbers will be represented in the form of minus 1 power s 1 dot m where m is the mantis see you can represent in the implicit form or explicit form if you are representing the explicit form it will be 0 dot m if it is an implicit it will be 1 dot m and 2 power exponent minus bias okay so all these things you don't worry the float it occupies 4 byte, double will occupy 8 bytes, okay. And similarly, character will hold one character which is occupied 2 bytes, okay. So, this is about the primitive data types. Now, let me discuss, if you take a byte, what are the range of values you can hold? Similarly, for a short, what are the range of values you can hold? All these things I will discuss in detail with you. Let me erase this one so that I can use this space to discuss the other things. And let me discuss about the non-primitive also, you will have a string. String is nothing but what? A collection of a character. Similarly, array is a collection of homogeneous values. The problem with the variables is it can hold the one value at a particular instant of time. Suppose let's take that I have a, a variable var is equal to 10. I have declared the variable. Let's take that it is an int var. Then I have assigned var is equal to 10. Then later I have changed var is equal to 10. Now, if you try to print the value which is there in the variable called var, it will display 11. Okay, so at any point of time, any variable can hold only one value. However, if you want to store more than one value, then you can use the array. Array is a collection of homogeneous elements. Suppose if you created an integer array, you can store the collection of integer values. Similarly, if you create an, a float array, you can store a collection of real numbers. Okay, is it clear? So non-primitive one we will discuss some other time about the strings and arrays later in detail. Now here we will mainly focus on the primitive data types. Okay. Now let me discuss how can you declare a boolean variable first. Okay. So you what you will write is boolean is the data type and the variable name. Suppose let's take that I am writing it as a var. Okay. So then you can ask me sir if I does not assign any value. To this variable and if I am trying to print it, how can I print system dot out dot print ln and if I write var then what will be the output will be displayed. Suppose the students who came from the C programming language before learning the Java they came from this they have already learned the C programming language they will say that it will display the garbage value but Java will do the garbage collection. So the default value if you take a boolean variable is false, okay. So the default value means if you does not assign any value to this variable, then it will display the output as false. That is what the default value is it, it will hold the false so that value will be displayed. For the integers it will be zeros and the float will be 0, 0.0, okay. Is it clear? So now let me discuss how can you declare a variable as byte. Same, you have to use the keyword called byte. 
okay and then a variable name let me write it as a now the point is that in the variable a what are the range of values you can hold or what are the values you can store as the byte is 8 bits so so n value is 8 so normally in two's complement representation you can store minus 2 to the power n minus 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1 so these are the range of values you can store what is the n value here n value is 8 because it is holding 8 bits of information because byte is 1 byte okay so minus 2 to the power 7 to 2 to the power 7 minus 1 which is minus 128 to 127 now some students can ask the doubt what is the doubt they will have is that sir if i in a program okay a byte a is equal to 127 i have assigned means i have declared and i have initialized the value as 127 that is fine then later i have written a statement called a is equal to a plus 1 okay then if i write system dot out dot print ln let me write that one system dot out dot print ln if i write the variable a then what value will it will display some people will say that it will display 128 but the people who have understood the range minus 128 to 127 they will say that sir 128 is not possible because we know mathematics a value is 127 127 plus 1 is 128 will be stored but 128 you cannot store because just now we have discussed minus 128 to 127 so it can hold the maximum number is 127 then how it can store 128 it is not practically possible so some people will say that it is error but you need to understand what value it will display and what is the reason for that one now look at here how the values will be stored is that it holds the if it is a byte a variable a it have the values from minus 128 to 127 so how it will hold is that 0 1 2 3 so on up to let's take that 127 then it will have minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 so on up to minus 128 you will have minus 127 here here you will have 126 like that now let me take this example i have assigned byte a is equal to 127 then i have written a is equal to a plus 1 if i am trying to print the a value using the command called system dot out dot print ln then what value it will display now a is having the 127 127 if you add 1 then it will go to the next because it is starting 0 1 2 3 4 so on 127 plus 1 will become minus 128 so if you write system dot out dot print ln it will display the output as minus 128 i hope you have understood the reason let me discuss with one more example let's take that a is having the value 1 if you write a is equal to a plus 1 1 next one will become 2 is it clear next one 2 suppose a value is having the value 2 2 plus 1 you have written 3 suppose if you have written a is equal to some 5 and you have written a plus 2 then 6 7 then a will have the value 7 is it clear so it will go like this clockwise direction so as initially you have kept a is equal to 127 127 plus 1 will be minus 128 my question is sir if byte is having the value is 127 i have written a is equal to a plus 2 then what will be the output if, if i write system dot out dot print and what will output it will display 127 plus 2 plus 1 is minus 128 plus 2 is minus 127 so in this case it will display the output as minus 127 i hope you have understood the this point is it clear if you understand this point you can answer several interview questions related to the data type so i hope you got the range of a byte similarly short is range is minus 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1 the same formula you need to apply the formula is minus 2 to the power n minus 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1 where n value is how many bits it will occupy 
is it clear as here it occupies okay is short na no? short is 16 bits na no? so 16 bits means minus 2 to the power 15 to 2 to the power 15 minus so 1 is it clear if it is int as it holds 4 bytes so 32 bit so you need to substitute the n value is 32 so that you will get the range similarly long also will get the ranges so based on what value you want to store accordingly you will declare the variable with corresponding data type similarly the float is also occupy 4 bytes and double will occupy 8 bytes and character will occupy 2 bytes how can you declare a character okay so you need to write here char some variable a is having the character called b okay then if you are writing system dot out dot print l and we here yes will be capital okay i think by this time you would have understood system dot out dot print ln then a if you write it will display the character called b is it clear now you can ask me sir in memory how the b will be stored you said that in memory everything will be in the form of ones and zeros okay how the a b will be stored for each character you will have a corresponding ascii value which we will call it as american standard code a for america s for standard c for code information interchange okay so each character suppose let's take that it is a small a small a will have the 97 then small b will have the 98 small c will be 99 if it is a capital a it will have 65 capital b 66 like each each character has its corresponding decimal number that decimal number you know i think you may know how to convert into a binary number let me discuss for the 97 okay 97 how it will hold in the memory 97 you need to convert into a binary number because 97 is a decimal number or it is a base 10 number so how can you convert is you need to divide by 2 okay you will have 48 and then you will have the remainder 1 so here you will keep the quotient and here you will keep the remainder always the remainders you will get zeros and ones if any number if you divide by 2 you will get the remainder as 0 and 1 if you divide any number by 3 you will get the remainder as either 0 or 1 or 2 okay then let me make it little bit fast okay now how you will represent this this will be your msb and this will be your lsb so 97 how you will represent is that let me erase here it will be 1100004 so one so this is the way if you write a character 97 in memory it will store like this is it clear as it is a two bytes the remaining bytes will be means remaining things will be zero so i hope you have understood the primitive data types and non primitive data types and what is the purpose of the data types and what is the significance of each data type if it is a byte how much memory will be occupied what are the range of values you can store all these things i hope it is clear for you if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts as early as possible thank you for watching the complete video have a nice day